So I just got in my latest auction win, which is a 30 pound lot of 14 film and digital cameras. Yeah. The bubble wrap was worth more than the camera in this case. The hazards of buying untested lots. Oh yeah. Oh, nice. I don't think I saw this in the listing. I definitely did not see this in the listing. Let's open it and see what we got inside. Okay, got a bunch of cameras in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and set the box down. And it looks like they're all in bubble wrap. Forgot to mention how much I paid for this lot. I paid $200 for this lot in an online auction. And my goal is to get to an overall target value of $500. So let's see if we can get to or beat that. All right, first one. Go ahead and open it up here. And the bubble wrap, I actually reuse. So whenever I go to ship out products, if I sell them, um, and hopefully some of these will sell someday, I will reuse this bubble wrap to ship out uh, the cameras that I sell in. First camera is a film camera. And I think these are gonna be mixed probably pretty evenly between film, mainly bodies, as well as digital cameras. Uh, this is a Minolta Maxim 7000i which is a 35 millimeter film camera. What you see often with this camera, you can see all of the wear on the grip and it's flaking and actually eating away a little bit there. Very common with older Minolta film cameras. A lot of these have the battery types that aren't so common, but I happen to have some batteries available on hand that hopefully once we get this open with a coin, uh, we can see what kind of battery it uses. I gotta find a coin. The old trusty dime. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, two CR5 battery, which I think I have actually. I have all my batteries in this handy little tub here, so I have to get up and walk around to try to find my batteries now. Uh, yeah, got one. I'm learning. I am capable of learning. Okay, power's on which is good. Now I need to find a lens real quick to test this. And I happen to have some Minolta lenses or Minolta compatible lenses that I can test this with. Okay, found it. We're gonna try a Minolta AF 28 to 80 millimeter lens, which should be compatible. Just line up the red dots if you're not familiar with these. And then the on button is gonna be right here. So we'll turn it on. And like I said, it did turn on. That sounded like the lens engaged. I'm gonna go ahead and try to take a picture real quick. Nice. No built-in flash on this model, so this ma this uh, camera would use a hot shoe flash, which would go right on top here. Nice, so working. It actually has film inside, and it did advance properly. So this camera is now film tested and working fine. I would just go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Um, this is definitely something you would want to note if you were to sell this because there's a lot of wear as you can see and like we mentioned on the grip. That will downgrade the value a fair amount. Uh, if I were to go ahead and put the kit lens on this and sell this as a kit, uh, we'd be looking at probably somewhere around $40 value for this. So not a bad start. And put that down here. Because I buy all these cameras on tested, I don't know which ones are going to work. Like with anything, you run a risk of maybe not doing as well as you would have expected. So sometimes I have lots where the majority of the cameras that I get don't actually work. But on the whole, the reason why I keep doing this, and it's because it's worth it for me. Reuse the bubble wrap. We got another Minolta 35 millimeter film camera. Now let's save that bubble wrap there. It's got someone's name on the back and a little address label. So I would peel that. I have some Gooby Gone stuff that I use to get rid of the, I'm not gonna show the address, but um, it'll get rid of the address on the back. So overall condition wise, you'll see again, got some grip issues. We're having some problems with grip here. So that will affect the value. 
Let's see if this uses the same battery type as the other one. Yeah, a 2CR5 battery is going to go in here. Oh, it bonked my head first. Okay. And turn it on. Power's on. Yeah, that grip is really worn. Okay, let's see. Looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and borrow the lens that we just used. Test this one as well. Yep, engaged. This one has a built-in flash. And it should be. Yep, autofocus works. And there we go. Twice or it's luck. Okay, this camera is also working. Uh, quite a bit of degradation on the grip, which will affect the value. If we're talking about just the body only for this camera, a Maxim 3XI, we're looking at a used value in this condition with the grip issue of probably 20 to 25, but we'll call it 20. So 20 bucks for this guy. Third camera. Whoa. Canon. Canon Rebel TI 35 millimeter film camera. Nice. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, it's in really nice shape. Uh, has some film inside, missing the rubber viewfinder cap was set to on, so the batteries, there's no batteries. This uses two CR2 batteries, which are tiny little squat batteries, which I have right here. I think most of the cameras that I'm gonna be pulling out of here today from the pictures that I saw are gonna use either some of these film camera batteries that I have or AA batteries for power. I think they make rechargeable two CR5s, but if you've seen rechargeable like CR123s or CR2s, Leave a note in the comments, I'd be interested in using those because I could use those for testing and then just for provide a brand new battery when I actually sell the camera. Okay, so LCD on the back turns on, good start. I'm gonna move it to on, and then it further displays. That's good. And I happen to have a Canon lens that I brought over just in case we needed it. So I'm gonna affix this Canon lens to the body and I've already tested this lens so I know it was working. It was from one of the last uh, auction videos that I did. So camera's on, there is a little. There is film inside. So I'm gonna move the lens in and out and zoom and see if the, the lens focuses with the body, and it does. And flash fires, film advances. This is in fine working condition. So I'll save the lens for later. And what I'm gonna talk about pricing wise for this is just for the body. So the Canon Rebel Ti, I think there were some videos, maybe this was just after Andre Agassi was doing a bunch of the Canon, the Canon Rebel SLR uh, ads. He ran those for years when he was at the height of his tennis popularity. I think he was wearing a wig at that point too. But in good working condition for just the body, uh, we're looking at a value of about $35 for this. If you had a lens or the kit lens that originally came with, you'd be looking at a value of between $69 and $89 for this in good tested working condition. Okay, three down. I think this is number four. Still on the film camera bandwagon here. You can tell. Uh, Canon EOS Rebel XS. May have also been from the Agassi era. Got a cool vintage Canon neck strap on it too. If these are in good shape, I try to keep them with the camera. A lot of times they have yellowing or wear, or they're a little bit musty. Okay, it doesn't turn on right now. It uses two CR123 batteries, which would go in here. And I have two of those over here. Wow, this is so much easier having the batteries close by. I didn't do that before. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay.
Power's on. Good start. Always like to see that. Now you can use the same test, testy lens here. No film in this one. Give it a shot. I heard the flash start up. Nice. Autofocus is working. Cool. This, this camera body is working just fine. I'm gonna do one last check of the viewfinder. And I have a big light right here that I can actually look into and I can see if there's any potential issues with either a bunch of dust that I would need to note or if there's actually um, maybe hazing or color variations view the, uh, through the viewfinder. That would be also something that I would wanna note. So this little guy's in good working condition. Once I get the grip cleaned off, I would say this would be in good working condition. And the value of an EOS Rebel XS in good working condition on a site like eBay would be somewhere around $35. Okay, Nikon N2020 35mm film camera with film inside. So, this is kind of a cool camera. Uh, right when things started getting more complicated, a little bit more complicated with the 35mm design, with a lot more options for ISO functionality. Oh, okay. I'm, just, I'm really glad I stumbled on that. It was already open. So the way to access the batteries is actually through the bottom door here. And it just kind of came off. And you can see when you look inside, we've got a tray in there with corroded batteries. Who knows how long these were in there, but this is not a super valuable 35 millimeter film camera. But I've seen some really cool pictures taken with this model because it was widely produced um, and built quite well. Uh, if this was in good working condition, it would have a value of probably somewhere around $25 without the lens. The lenses can add a lot of value. If it's, you know, a 50 millimeter or a 24 millimeter pancake lens, those are worth sometimes two or three times more than a potty like this. I'll work on that later. So I'm not going to assign a value to this one just yet. Oh, first digital camera of the day. We've got a Canon PowerShot SX20 which is a high optical zoom, double A powered, beefy bridge camera. First, one of the first available bridge cameras. Lens looks decent, just has a little bit of dust and debris. Uh-oh, these batteries, I tell you what, slide them out. Sunbeams, sunbeams, or as I call them, the devil's battery. Terrible batteries. Um, these are like the dollar store batteries and they rarely even power on a camera. They're just not worth it. Get either rechargeable AA batteries. Thanks to the viewer that pointed that out. I didn't mention it in one of my last videos. If you have rechargeable AA batteries, those are the way to go. Uh, they save batteries with a lot of bad chemicals and stuff in them from ending up in the landfill. Um, but if you can't, don't buy these because they're just not worth it. Get a better brand or I use Amazon AA batteries and they work pretty well. And I've tested them against a lot of other major brands. The good thing is the battery, uh, the battery tray looks clean. Ooh, grabbed it. What a grab. I used to be a soccer goalie in uh, junior high. Maybe my reflexes came back to me. Okay, throwing in the batteries here. Last one going in. What I like to do before I even put a memory card in testing wise is just turn on the camera and make sure it powers on first. Flip out the LCD. So this has a, a fully artic well, unarticulating LCD, also pretty uncommon for the time. So this was kind of a cool camera when it, re it was released by Canon. It still is, it takes some good pictures. Sold a lot of these. Let's see if it powers on. It does. Power's on, good. And I'll move the LCD out. It's stuck in the viewfinder display right now. If you tap display on the back, it should revert back to the LCD screen. But this one is, there we go, there. So now we can see what we're shooting. See if we have any dust spots or issues with the lens. 
there are some dust spots in this lens. So if you look in the LCD there, see if you can see it, there's darkest spots that you'll see. So I'm gonna clean the front real quick. So if a camera lens hasn't been cleaned for a really long time, just using a cleaning cloth sometimes won't, won't, uh, won't cut it. So I used a little bit of cleaning solution there. Cleaning off the lens, it's looking really good. Let's see how, sh how the pictures look now. Yeah, yeah, there's still black spots in the pictures. So there appears to be dust inside of the sensor in this camera. And if I just powered it on and took a picture without zooming, you wouldn't even be able to tell because it only really is apparent as you zoom out, then the dust in the sensor basically gets amplified and that's why you're able to see it so well. So this is a camera that I'm gonna try to see if I can get working properly. There's some teardowns you can do on cameras to try to fix the sensor issue. There's some vibration things you can do to try to move the dust out of the sensor just by vibrating it. So I'm gonna try some of those and see if I can get this work. The cool thing about, uh, not a higher end camera like this, but a camera that if this was in used good working condition would have a value of around say $65. Even powering on with that problem, if I didn't know how to fix it or if it I can't end up fixing it, would still sell for about $20. So broken as is, Powering on this camera, I'm gonna assign a value even if it's not fully functional like it is right now for, of $20. All right, moving on. Uh, accumulate things. All right, let's see if we can open this one a little bit better. Better start, better start. A lot of it depends on the tape that they use. Don't know what this is yet. Coming into view, Sony CyberShot, looks like a DSC H300, it is. DSC H300, which is also a higher optical zoom bridge camera. Still a really nice camera, actually. I did a full review of this on my YouTube channel. It's a cool camera. Uh, darn, okay, does have some residue on it from a battery being improperly stored in there probably for a long period of time so it doesn't look too bad and there's no battery corrosion on the inside battery tr uh, terminals which are the is the most important part so if there's a lot of acid on the very inside ones this would be very hard to get working um, and that's pretty deep inside. It's not like you can take off a couple of screws and access that. It's harder to get to than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw AA batteries in anyway and see if it's working. It should still be working. It's not a huge amount. And if it's not, then I'm gonna go ahead and get my brush and we'll try to clean it off. But we'll try it for now. No power. Okay. Let's see if I can find my brush. We're back. Got my brush. Whoop. And also put a little bit of put a little vinegar on there. So what you want to do is just lightly brush. Probably help if you did it over a trash can or something, unlike what I'm doing. And I've got another cleaning cloth. Different spray. So these battery terminals aren't super thick, so you don't want to use something super abrasive on them. Otherwise you're gonna wear wear away the metal, and over time, you won't even have a connection there anymore. Let us try this again with batteries. After the battery terminal is cleaner. Always wanna make sure your batteries are going in the right way. I've made that mistake many, many times, and then get confused as to why it's not actually working. 
No power still. Dang. Okay. Well, the hazards of buying untested lots. This camera, if it was in used good working condition, even with the battery terminal issue, it'd still sell for about $80. In its current non-working, non-powering on condition, not a whole lot of value. You're looking at about $20 free shipping on eBay for a camera like this. So 20 bucks, Sony DSC H300. Hoping for better times. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, yeah. The bubble wrap was worth more than the camera in this case. These are just terrible film cameras. ISO 200 film and panoramic. This is the disposable film camera of its day, I think. But, it, I mean, it, it can be reused. It's got a battery port and it does have a removable film. It's just pretty low quality, so no value there. Fuji Discovery 90 date 35 millimeter film camera. There's film inside and there's a red light blinking. You can see it, there it is. Huh, all right, it's a good sign. That's a promising start for this young camera. Actually, it might be older than I am. Um, AA batteries. Wow, I'm surprised this still worked. And I pull out some AA batteries of myself. There we go. Light is also flashing. We'll turn the flash mode on. Sometimes it takes a while for the flash to charge once you turn on the camera for the first time. Uh, this was a widely produced film camera of its day. I think it has a, oh, it has a macro mode too. That's kind of fun. And it has a date that would save on the film. So I'm gonna take a test picture here. I didn't see the flash fire. Let me try it again. Ah, yes. You have to wait until the green light is visible before the flash fires in this camera. Sometimes it takes me a while because I haven't sold this camera in a while to get reacquainted with it. But uh, yeah, this camera is in fine working condition. It does have the film inside still. i would go ahead and get remove, remove that, but it is film tested now. And this camera in good working film tested condition is going to have a value of about $35. I still remember how I got my first camera, and it was at a company picnic that my dad had. And there was a game where you had to guess the weight of the watermelon, and they had a big old watermelon that was on the stand. And I put a guess, and I don't remember what I guessed, but apparently I was the closest because they called my name, and it's was really shy and quiet at the time and kind of embarrassed, but I ended up with my first camera. And it was a film camera of some type. I don't have it anymore. But I still remember taking pictures with that, with that camera. So I guess maybe that's what got me into this business. I've been doing and buying and selling used cameras now for seven years, like I've said in uh, previous videos, and just more or less kind of stumbled into it. Nikon Coolpix L840 has some writing on the top there. Jewelry tester camera. Huh, hopefully it worked for you. Pretty neat camera. It's got a 38x optical zoom, which is very, very large. Um, this was a precursor, a bit of a precursor to the really, really big super zooms uh, that Nikon has, like the P900 and P1000, which are really awesome cameras. Excellent pictures of the moon. This can actually take some cool pictures of the moon too. Bing, bing. Okay, battery's in. Turn it on, green light turns on. And menu comes up. So that's good. English, 
No. A lot of times the cameras are stuck in different languages and it takes a second or two to figure out how to get to the menu and change it back to English. I wish I was uh, bilingual or trilingual in many of those cases. Okay, formatting the menu. I didn't see any jewelry in the picture that I looked at before I deleted it. Okay, we're just testing the zoom now. So we're going to move the lens in and out. Moves in and out fine. So cool, let's take a picture real quick. Pop the flash, the flash button is there. Okay, it's in auto mode, so didn't want to engage. Set the flash to fill. So fill flash means it will automatically fire whenever you take the picture. There, we got the flash, right? Try it again, I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention, yeah. Okay, nice. So LCD is clean. Um, I'll get that sticker taken off and we'll be looking at a value of this Nikon Coolpix L840 of right around $90. What do we got? Oh, nice. I don't think I saw this in the listing. I definitely did not see this in the listing. Wow. Uh, I won't let that ruin my joy. This, was, this is really cool. This is a Sony A3000 mirrorless camera, which is, I think, one of the first budget mirrorless cameras that Sony made. So it uses the Sony E-mount uh, lenses. thing I immediately noticed with the lens is there's not just dust inside, there appears to be haze inside of the lens. So haze is basically when moisture gets or condensation uh, gets inside of the lens. The fungus can get inside. Um, that's really hard to fix with more modern lenses like this because they're hard to take apart. The sensor actually looks good. Just looking at it, sensor looks good. This is going to use the Sony NPFW50 battery. I have some charge ones over there just in case this one doesn't power on. Simple on off button on the top. Does not power on. Okay. I'm going to go get one real quick. We're back. Brought two batteries just in case, as I am wont to do. They're both aftermarket batteries, and hopefully it will power on. Just using the little toggle on the top there. Menu does power on. Flash is here, push the button, flash pops up. Set to LC. Yep, takes a picture. Let's see if we can manually pop the flash, fire the flash here. Yep. Okay, everything looks good. Camera's working just fine. Um, only downside is that haze inside of the lens. So, Unfortunately, that will diminish the value of this quite a bit. If this lens was in good working condition, just like the camera's working just fine, is in good condition, um, this would be worth about $200, $200 on average of what I've sold it for. I've sold uh, over 50 of these in the last four years. So the value will fluctuate with time. It's kind of like the stock market. It just depending on the day, it varies a little bit. So pricing I've seen fluctuate quite a bit on a lot of different items over the last seven years because a lot of the cameras that I sell are older cameras. So most of them have been on the market for a really long time. So let's take this apart and price it separately. So we're looking at a good working condition Sony A3000 body. You're looking at about $125 for this. And I'm able to find the shutter count for this camera, which I'll put in the listing whenever I list it, just by putting a memory card in and taking a picture. And then there's software you can get that will allow you to check the the shutter count of the camera, which is nice for prospective buyers so they know how much the camera's been used. So 125 here and the lens, even with the haze, it's working fine. Really will just depend on the shoot, the lighting conditions of what the lens is shooting in as to whether that will affect things a lot. It can definitely refract light and cause issues in pictures. Value of the 18 to 55 millimeter lens working with haze is gonna be right around $35. All right. So that's a cool little bonus. Wasn't expecting that. Three more down here. 
This looks like a film camera. Good bubble wrap out of that. Not only do I recycle cameras and give them to new homes, I also recycle bubble wrap. Rico. I have not seen this model before. It's a Rico XRM multi program tri metering camera. Wow. 35 millimeter film, it looks like. I just open the, bat, the rear door. Okay. Kind of looks like that Nikon N2020. Just pushing all the buttons and moving everything around. Not sure why. Uh, let's see. If I can find my dime from earlier. Ta da! Little dime's back. I think the battery area may be in here. A lot of times it's in the grip. It looks like that might just use regular double A's. And if so, well, ah, batteries. And it does. Wow, cool. I think I can at least power this on. Uh, whoa, okay. This is, oh, it uses five batteries. I'm able to cram five batteries in here. That's nuts. Yeah. Wow, five batteries in there. Let's see if I can figure out how to get it back in. Oh, that was pretty easy. Oh, turns on. That's cool. I have a Pentax Suns I can actually reach from here. How crazy is that? It was just sitting up here. Ugh. Ugh. That is very fortuitous. So Pentax came out, bayonet lens will fit on this Rico XRM. Rico and Pentax are kind of synonymous. Oh, yeah, would help if I took off the lens cap. Uh, this looks very distorted. I think there's something wrong with the shutter. Yeah, it's like in, it's getting stuck. You can barely see anything. Yeah, hey, there's something going on with this camera. I have to do a little more digging into it. It does power on. I'd have to look up the value. I would imagine the value of this in working tested condition would be somewhere around 30 maybe, or 40. But it's got some issues. I'm going to have to look into this one further. So no value on this guy. We got two more down here. Two more. Thank you for being my tester lens, though, buddy. Buddy old pal. Mm. A little elf. It's, this doesn't use 35 millimeter film. Is this... Elf Z3. Gotta look it up. Looking it up. Looking it up. Canon Elf Z3. Okay, so I've tried selling these in the past. Uh, it does, in fact, use APS film, which is a discontinued film type that is hard to come by and generally not available. So even if this was, it's in good condition, I'm not even gonna bother to test it. I'll probably just keep it on a shelf because it's kind of cool, but it's just not viable. It's not like an old 35 millimeter film camera where you can still get a lot of use out of. This camera is not really even usable. So it would probably just sit on my eBay store for $10 with free shipping for a really long time. So no value here. Maybe I'll put it on the shelf right here. You wanna live there next to your Olympus friend? All right, last one. The last camera. Should be like the Hot Ones episode where uh, they eat the spicy hot wing and the last wing that they eat is always the hottest and they call it the last dab. I don't know how I would make the last camera the most interesting or spiciest, but 
This is not the spiciest, but it's a cool camera. Canon PowerShot SX120, which is a point and shoot digital camera using AA batteries. Sold a lot of these. It's actually in camera sales the year this came out, and I remember training on how to sell this. That was a long time ago. Any right, more double A's here? Oh, hey, how about that? We're down to two double A batteries, and that's all I need. Double A's in there. And power button is up here on the top. No power. No power! Looks relatively clean. So what I'm doing now is just moving the battery posts up a little bit. Because what happens with time on these, even if there's no corrosion inside of the actual battery terminal, the metal can actually, the metal prong can get recessed and down from where it's supposed to be. So it's not sprung up properly. So I'm just moving it back into a better position. We'll see if that does a trick. If that does not do the trick, then there's something else going on with this camera. And I probably don't know how to fix it. Oh, it works. Nice. So that saved me a lot of cameras because a lot of people just write that off with it not working with new batteries inside, but this camera's working just fine. Let's, um, let's put a memory card in and try to take a picture. Lens is a bit noisy, pretty common with older Canon power shots. Pop the flash and see if it takes a picture. You can do it! You can do it! The flash takes a while to charge. There we go. And once it flashes, then it will go a little bit quicker. Clean the lens off a little bit. The noisy lens, I would just note in the description. But this is a camera that's going to sell for about $50 used right now. Keep in mind, these prices are as of the time of this filming. They may go up a little bit. They may go down a little bit. I don't know. I'm just, just informing as to what the current uh, average market price is for what I've seen for these models.